I'm fine. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV. Delighted to be joined by Frank Smith, Phoenix, Arizona. Frank, how have you been, my friend? Out last night? I'm good, my friend. How are you? It was our annual Christmas party last night, so we popped out for a bit, but I'm feeling good. That, that's like the, the song, I'm feeling good, Michael Bublé, you've, you've got that in there. Yeah, I was going to get you to sing it, but now we'll, we'll, we'll miss I'm, that now. I'm chewing gum as well, and I don't like chewing gum in an interview, but you sort of just like pulled me. I just nabbed you in there. Apologies, mate. Let's, uh, let's first of all talk about yesterday. Really heated press conference from a lot of respects, one of which being the whole fight that broke out here. Like, it, Obviously, it's not a good look for box and what happened. Also, when you've got a fighter involved, like Gordy Rossi swings for the opposition trainer and fighter, what, what happens there? Is there any sort of uh, conversation that you've had with him? No, look, it's it's not good as you say, but at the same time, it's a it's heated time. You got into, you got two people who are going in to have a tear up. Is the reality of it? And there's a lot of tension. You know, you saw that in the in the words they had at the press conference. But um, never ideal. But it's not the first time we've seen it, and it won't be the last. Is the reality of it? You know. Is there is there a point though that you need to have a discussion with the likes of Gordy Rustin in Boston there and say like like we can't have this because we've seen things before where someone gets caught and the fight's off. But we tell it's like it's pointless if you don't end up fighting because one of you gets cut because you're rolling around on the floor. Um, but at the same time, it, like I say, it won't be the last time this ever happens in the sport. Um, not I'm not you know saying it's it's great, but at the same time that's that's the sport we're in. We're in a business where people you know, are ready to have a fight at any moment. Um, and some of them can hold that back and some actually just want to have a tear up. But yes, we, we do always speak to people and we want people to get in the ring on the night and get paid for it, not have a tear up at the press conference rolling around on the floor. What was, uh, what did you make of Bam and Sonny's interaction yesterday? Sonny hasn't really been quite vocal in the lead up to this fight and he was very vocal yesterday. What did you make of that? He got his NBA tickets, didn't he? I think that's what it was. Yeah. That was the best the best few quid I've ever spent is getting NBA tickets and they all piped up. Um, I think as you know, look, it's been a long lead up time with this, hasn't it? It's been five or six months. Um, and there's a lot of respect between the two of them. They both know how good each of them are, you know, so that plays a big part in it. But I think we're getting to the point now where it's, you know, it's the fire's lit and Sonny's ready and we know what's like, you know, we know what Sonny's like. Look at his social media, that's what he's like in real life. He's not afraid of saying things, and um, you know I think it's it brought out the the real Sonny Edwards this week. Um, and look, it's all part and parcel of the game, you know, and that's what that's what he's here to do. So, yeah, it's been probably a bit quieter or a bit more respectful prior to this, um, and the respect's there. The respect's there between the two of them, um, but I think now's getting to the crunch time. I done an interview with Sonny yesterday. I don't know if you've seen the clip, but he spoke about you wanting to pay him money when he told you that. He was going to do it for free, referencing that commentary position a few months ago. What did you make of that whole situation where Sonny said, and that's why he believed that when you just give him the word about the tickets, that he wanted them tickets? I would rather have given him the money for the commentary. Um, yeah, no, look, he's, I remember that actually. I remember, you know, came back and said, no, I don't, I said I'd do that for free. So look, he's a, he's a man of his word, um, and he's, uh, you know, everything that he said he'd do, he's done. And we got there with the tickets in the end. So, you know, I, I get on well with Sonny and I think he's done a tremendous job in the sport, especially in a division where it's hard to create and sell yourself like he has. He's done an amazing job and will continue to do so. We've seen Eddie having a little bit of a back and forth with The Ring magazine last night on Twitter. Has there been any discussions with The Ring magazine? Do you envisage a situation where they come to you and say that The Ring magazine belt will be on the line? I don't think they're, ch they're going to change their mind. Honestly, I mean, it's a shame because it is the number one and number two and this will this will decide the number one in the division. But I don't think that's going to change, unfortunately. And we have to get a look. We still got a great fight. Would have been great if the belt was on the line, but we move on. Talk to me a little bit about the fact that Conor Ben's situation, obviously the Eubank fights off February 3rd. Conor's still going to fight February 3rd, February 4th. Is it going to be Las Vegas the week before? Because we've seen now top rank have said that they're going on the Thursday. Going on that eighth of February, yeah, just before the Super Bowl, aren't they? Um, we're working on it. That's a potential. We're working on a lot of different options currently for him. Um, it's moving in. You know, it's fast paced. It's real time, and we we hopefully get something done in the next week. But um, the focus for is us. Barry also the front runner. Mm, he's a name in there. I don't think. I don't personally think he's a front runner, but he's one of the names in there. There's a lot of names, 
all different levels we're looking at. So um, but I think next week it will all become clear, and I think we'll have to get it announced next week if it's going to happen. We've seen him also have a bit of a pop at Connor Ben on social media. He said he that Connor's trying to make that fight for February when he knows that Haney won't be ready for February. Who is um, Devin Haney? Um, Did you see that? No, sorry, Connor's trying to make the fight for February, but yeah, I mean, look, it's you know, uh, Devin obviously boxed six days ago, five days ago. The reality is he's he's not going to be ready for a February third date, but it doesn't mean that fight can't happen in time. Um, right now, the focus is on Conor Ben and getting that fight and keeping him active. You know, he had a, he got he had a comeback fight in September. If he fights in February again, it's good. You know, he's had two fights then in four or five months, um, and that's the focus for us. And then the big fights are there to be made. Is there any way that that fight could take place in the UK? Uh, Conor Ben's Conor Ben's February fight. Anything's possible, but we are looking at all options currently. Okay. In terms of Devin Haney, what's the situation there going forward contractually? Is he going to have his next fight with Matchroom? Is there a contractual agreement that it will be on Matchroom and zone, or is he a free agent? No, look, we've got certain ties with him, and I believe we'll continue to work with him. We've had, we had a great relationship for many years. He obviously went off to become undisputed. That was his dream, and I think he's in a very strong position now. I think Devin, Bill, they like working with us. Um, you know, and we've, like I say, had a great relationship and hopefully we'll continue to do so and deliver some big nights with him because he's got massive potential to keep building in this sport and go to another level. Oh, look at him. What? what? <laughs> Where have you been? They do that top in your size. Mate, well, Mate let's be honest. look at those moves. Oh, okay. I didn't iron mine, but... I mean... Put them. <laughs> It's called pecs, mate. You wouldn't know about They're it. not pecs. Mate, trust me, they're pecs. You'll see it on Men's Health real soon. Anyway, mate, we were Oh, yeah, so oh, yeah, yeah, let me tell you about the fight. You know, it's about the footwork and, you know, it's, you know he's got to really close off the ring. And I've is that what you that. call it? Cut the I've ring off? Said, of when have I ever said that? Leave me alone. Jack Catterall, Josh Taylor, Frank. What, where are we at with that? Um... Still, I mean, still seeing if it's possible. Um, looking at various options for it. I don't think it's looking likely as I stand here today, but, you know. So what is next for Jack Catterall then? Because obviously as his promoter, he's in a, a tough spot. No, look, he's got, look, there's, there's a number of fights at 140, but he's got to make the right move, you know, and the right decision for him. He's obviously been an eliminator for the IBF, has been ordered against Richardson Hitchens. There's a discussion to be had there. But look, our fight, we would love, we want to make the Josh Taylor fight, but everyone has to be sensible. We've seen that time and time again in a lot of fights. Um, but people have to be sensible and let, let's see I'm not saying it's not going to happen I'm just saying as I stand here right now I'm not sure well Frank always a pleasure we'll catch up tomorrow mate appreciate trying it. to rush me off now so you can do the real man who gets proper views I'm fine